everyone welcome to my channel anukma biology classes in this video our topic is variation and mutation this video is from cbse class 12th chapter 5th part 4th of genetic series now come to the point here first thing we have to know that what is variation the differences among the members of a species and offspring of the same parents are referred to as variation so any differences between the cells individual organism or groups of organism of any species caused either by genetic differences or by the effect of environmental factors on the expression of genetic potentials are variation variation arises from mutation and described as diversity in the genetic makeup of a species variation is of two types on the basis of nature of cells affected in which the first one is somatic variation and the second is germinal variation which we will discuss in the next slide somatic variation is affected by three factors first one is environment second is use and disuse of organs and third is conscious efforts and the germinal variation is of two types first one is continuous variation and second is discontinuous variation now here the first variation that is somatic variation so what is somatic variation it affects the somatic cells of an organism it is neither inherited from the parents nor transmitted to the next generation it is acquired by an individual during its own life and is lost with its death so it is also called acquired variation it is produced by three type of factors in which the first one is environment so environment includes all the factors that affect the organism like habitat light temperature food air pressure humidity wind animals etc and the environmental factors affect all organism however it affects the plants more than the animals because they cannot move and protect themselves from environmental hazards a modification in the phenotype of an organism resulting from environmental influences is called ecophenotype the ability of an organism to alter its phenotype in response to environmental condition is termed phenotypic plasticity plant growth and flowering are commonly affected by the changes in their environment and now here some cases that show the role of environmental factors in which the first one is that is light flat fish develops pigmentation in response to light in this picture you can see that is the flat sip that is solia A newly hatched flatfish has pigmentation and eye on both sides. The adult fish habitually rests on its left side on the sandy sea floor. Gradually, its left side loses pigmentation and its left eye moves on to the right side. Thus, a flatfish acquires a somatic variation under the influence of light. Now, tanning is an adaptive radiation. how because a strong sunlight tans the human skin by increasing the dark pigment that is melanin in the epidermal cells and melanin protects the underlying cells by absorbing the ultraviolet rays of the sun next is plant growing cell become weak and etiolated and acquire long internodes and thin broad leaves while in the full sun plants produce a strong mechanical tissue and uh, small thick leaves and the palisade parenchyma of the leaf single layer in the moderate light and may become many layer in strong light next is habitat a stocked kept eggs of the fish fundulus in sea water containing magnesium chloride here the eggs hatched into the peculiar fish having a single median eye instead of two lateral eyes the fish have two lateral eyes when hatched in the normal medium the amphibious heterophilous plant that is ranunculus aquatilis 
In this picture, you can see has divided leaves under water and the entire leaves above water. And the plants growing in arid leaf areas have succulents to retain water and reduced leaves to check loss of water by the transpiration. Next is nutrition. An example of the effect of food is afforded by honeybee. A larva fed on bee bread that is pollen mixed with a little honey grows into a worker that is a sterile female and the larva fed on royal jelly that is a secretion from the mouth of nursing workers grows into a queen that is fertile female. Deficiency of iron causes chlorosis that means lack of chlorophyll in case of plants. Next is temperature. Increase in temperature speeds up the heat and water loss from the body. So, the pinny are shorter in the fox species that is living in colder regions than in those inhabiting warmer areas. Short pinny lose less heat than the long ones. Plants inhibiting Hot reasons so nannism of root system and increased growth of the root system. Now, the second factor is that is use and disuse of organs. So here, the continuous use of an organ makes it better developed whereas constant disuse makes it reduced. So, these factors affect the higher animals and here it is illustrated by the following examples in which the first one that is a player who uses muscles in daily exercise acquires a stronger and more muscular body than the one who does not take exercise. And second that is a lion kept in the zoo is weaker than that living in the jungle. This is because the former does not use its muscle to capture the food while the latter struggles for it. And the next is conscious efforts. So this includes many types of efforts like the castration. It means the damaging the testis. Next is mutilation. It means the cutting of organs such as horns, pinny and tail in the domestic animals, board pinny and nose in Indian women to wear ornaments, cylinder vest that is achieved by using tight garments and belts in the European women, a small feet that is acquired by wearing tight shoes in Chinese, varied hair, beard and moustache styles produced by barber's skill. That is receiving education, learning an art, farming habits, training of pets are other examples of the somatic variation that is produced by man's conscious effort. And here that is provide desired sake to the plant by trimming is also a case of somatic variation that is introduced by human conscious effort and so is making bonsai or shrub grown in a pot or tray and trained by pruning and supports into an aesthetically pleasing forms which you can see in the picture here that is a picture of a bonsai so the lamarck held that the acquired variation is inheritable and made it the keystone of his theory of evolution that is the theory of inheritance of acquired characters and put forward in 1809. Now the second variation that is germinal variation. So what is germinal variation? Germinal variation affects the germ cells of an organism and is consequently inheritable. It is received by the individuals from the parents and is transmitted to the next generation. It is divided into two types in which here you can see that is variation is of two types. First one is continuous and second is discontinuous. Continuous variation is here the different characteristics within a population like height, body, mass and intelligence. While in the second that is discontinuous variation, it is distinct features like the blood group, tongue roll, 
ear lobe etc so the first germinal variation that is the continuous variation so what is continuous variation continuous variation refers to the small distinct differences from the average conditions it occurs on both sides of the normal type and is connected with it by intermediate stages here you can see hence it can be represented by a smooth bell shaped curve and because of this it is also called fluctuating variations or fluctuations and here you can see in this picture the majority of the individual shows the normal condition of the trait here the number of individuals progressively decrease with an increase in the degree of fluctuations the continuous variation is characteristic of quantitative characteristics such as height in man milk yield in cow and the continuous variation is very common in nature it is found in all animals and plants and affected all of their organs so the continuous variation is unstable and does not contribute to the formation of new species now there are many causes of the continuous variation here the first one that is the new combination of the characters or chromosomes so the first during the formation of gametes by random separation of paternal and maternal chromosomes into the daughter cells into anaphage first then at the time of fertilization by random fusion of male and female gametes to form a zygote here there are two possibilities in first that is after the cell division and cell cycle of springs are formed which shows only parental combination and in second just because of crossing over new combinations are formed which you can see in the picture which shows that sexual reproduction provides infinite chances of the new combination of existing traits now the second cause is crossing over that means recombination it is a mutual exchange of corresponding segments of the non sister chromatids of the two paired homologous chromosomes it occurs in the prophase of meiosis first which transfers a block of genes from each chromosome to its homolog here you can see that crossing over during the meiosis increases genetic diversity crossing over is the exchange of chromosome segments between the homologous chromosome and occurs during the prophase first of meiosis first so in this picture in first that is two homologous chromosomes pair up with each other during the prophase first in meiosis after this in this second position some chromatids are very close to each other and segments cross and uh, then in the third that is some of these segments break off and reattached to the other homologous chromosome and it shows that means crossing over and formation of new recombinants after this how many types of continuous variations are so you can see here continuous variations are of two types in which the first one that is the substantive continuous variation and this variation affects the size weight shape and color of an organism or its parts in other words you can also say that it changes the characters of an organism or organ like if you talk about the height skin color and shape of nose eyes fingers feet in human beings milk yield in dairy cattle egg production in poultry coat color in rabbit and the length of the body in earthworm these all shows the substantive continuous variation second is meristic continuous variation and this variation involves a changes in the number of certain parts of an organism like the presence of four or six arms in a starfish which normally has five arms variation in the number of segments that is 100 to 120 in case of earthworms differences in the number of tentacles in case of hydra 
presence of six sepals or petals in a pentamerous flower and the number of grains in a wheat ear are meristic continuous variations in case of plants and animals. If we talk about the inheritance of the continuous variation, Darwin held that the continuous variation is heritable and formed at the basis of theory of organic evolution, namely natural selection that is advanced in 1859. However, being unstable, the continuous variation does not contribute to evolution. Now, what are the importance of continuous variation? So here the first that is continuous variation enables organism to adopt to their environment. It also makes them better fitted for the struggle of existence and continuous variation has enabled man to improve the races of the useful animals and plants by hybridization. Now the second that of the germinal variation that is discontinuous variation. So what is discontinuous variation? It refers to the large conspicuous differences of the offspring from the parents. It is also known as mutation or sport or saltation and individuals with this kind of variations are called the mutants. There are no intermediate stages between the parents and the mutants. There is no average or mean from which divergence of a mutant can be seen. It appears suddenly, it is stable and inheritable. Now, there are some causes of the discontinuous variation in which the first one that is the modification in the structure of chromosomes like it occurs by deletion, translocation, inversion and duplication of a part of a chromosome. Second is alteration in the chemical nature of genes and it occurs by addition, deletion and substitution of one or more nitrogenous bases in DNA segment. Third is changes in the number of chromosomes and here it occurs by first one that is the non-disjunction. In this case, it may add one extra homologous chromosomes in the offspring or delete one of a pair of homologous chromosomes in the offspring. And second is polypolyidy. It may add one or more complete sets of chromosomes. And the last cause is that is radiation and chemicals. Exposure of an organism to radiation and certain chemicals causes genetic changes or mutations. These radiations like the x-rays and the chemicals like the nitrous acid. So these are responsible for the discontinuous variation. Now the types of discontinuous variations. So here you can see that is discontinuous is also of two types. And the first one is substantive discontinuous variation. This variation affects the size, weight, shape and color of an organism or its part. Like a short-legged variety of sheep that is known as ancon sheep, a hornless variety of cattle which is called polled Hereford cattle, hairless variety of dogs, cat and mice, syndactyly that means fused finger and brachydactyly that means abnormal short fingers etc are the other examples of the substantive discontinuous variation. Second is meristic discontinuous variation and this variation involves a changes in the number of certain parts of an organism like uh, presence of an additional digits that is finger or toes in case of human beings is known as the polydactyly. Now inheritance of discontinuous variation. Discontinuous variation is stable and inheritable. It plays a role in evolution. De Vries made mutation the basis of his theory of organic evolution namely mutation theory and put forward in 1901. Now, after this, what are the significance of variation? So, variation is, it forms the raw material for evolution. 
variation enables the organism to adapt themselves to changing environment variation enables the organism to face the struggle for existence in a better way variation helps man in improving the races of useful animals and plants discontinuous variation produces new traits in organism in a single generation variation gives each organism an individuality of its own without variation there would be no science of heredity at all and the last is all the individuals of a race would be exactly identical in all respects so these are the significance of variation now the second main topic that is here what is the differences in the continuous and discontinuous variation so according to the properties continuous variation have no distinct categories no limit on the value and tends to be quantitative while the discontinuous variation distinct categories have no in between categories and tends to be qualitative according to the example in case of continuous variation height weight heart rate finger length leaf length etc while in case of discontinuous variation tongue rolling fingerprints eye color blood groups etc according to the representation continuous variation represented by the line graph like a bell shaped curve while the discontinuous variation represented by a bar graph continuous variation controlled by a lot of gene and environment that is range of phenotypes between two extremes like height in case of humans while the discontinuous variation here a few genes present that limited number of phenotypes with no intermediates like a b ab and o blood groups in case of humans so these are the main differences between the continuous variation and discontinuous variation now the second main topic that is the mutation so what is mutation the term mutation was introduced by hugo de vries in 1901 for the marked inheritable variations appearing suddenly in the plant named evening primrose that is oenothera lamarckiana mutation is a rare discontinuous inheritable variation in the amount or the structure of genetic material that is dna in the genotype of an organism so there are many types of mutations in which mutation takes place in the germ cells are called germinal mutation and these are inherited by the next generation while the mutation appearing in the somatic cells are termed somatic mutations and these are inherited only by the daughter cells formed by mitosis from the mutant cells there are two main types of mutation first one is chromosomal mutation and second is gene mutation so mutation is a change that occurs in our dna sequences either due to mistakes when the dna is copied or as a result of environmental factors such as uv light and cigarette smoke etc over a lifetime our dna can undergo changes or mutations in the sequence of bases and that bases are a g c and t that means adenine guanine cytosine and thymine and this results in changes in the protein that are made and this can be a bad or a good thing so mutation may be bad or may be good after this now the first mutation that is the chromosomal mutations or aberration these mutations affect large portion of the chromosomes and are observable under a microscope they involve morphological modifications in chromosomes now there are two types of chromosomal mutations first one that is the intrachromosomal modifications and the second is interchromosomal modification in case of intrachromosomal modification these changes affect a single chromosome that means inside the chromosome 
in which in case of intrachromosomal there are two types first one is deletion and the second is inversion so in case of deletion it is also known as deficiency a segment of chromosome lacking a centromere separates and is lost it is of two types first one is interminal and the second is intercalary or interstitial the affected chromosome loses certain genes and becomes shorter than normal deletion is noticeable at the time of synapses of the homologous chromosomes a segment of longer chromosome remains unpaired in terminal deletion and forms a loop in the intercalary deletion so like cryo chat syndrome it is an example of the deletion results by deletion of half of the short term of chromosome 5 in humans and here what you can see that is cry of an infant having this disorder resembles the sound of a cat in pain so overall in case of deletion that occur towards the end of chromosome are called terminal and if it occurs towards the interior of a chromosome it's known as intercalary or interstitial now inversion so what is inversion a segment of a chromosome separates and rejoin it in an inverted position is known as inversion inversion is also of two types so here first may be terminal or intercalary in case of intercalary inver inversion may be pericentric if the inverted segment includes the centromere in it and second is paracentric if it the inverted segment is on one side of the centromere so this is known as pericentric and paracentric in case of pericentric include the centromere and in case of paracentric do not include the centromere here you can see the example that is the deletion and inversion here in this picture that is in a picture of inversion it shows that a chromosome rearrangement in which a segment of a chromosome reverses end to end and this shows that the rotate the selected gene section is known as inversion so the deletion and inversion here produce new locations for genes and may change phenotypic expression and they may make affected chromosomes unable to pair in meiosis and cause sterility after this the second that is interchromosomal modification in this case these changes affect two chromosomes simultaneously it is of also two types in which the first one is translocation a segment of a chromosome breaks off and joins a non homologous chromosome both the affected chromosomes get modified is known as translocation here the donor suffers deletion and becomes shorter than normal and the recipient has an extra set of genes and become longer than normal translocation may be simple that means interstitial or reciprocal which you can see in this picture in case of reciprocal translocation two non homologous chromosomes mutually exchange segments and the affected chromosomes retain their original site but have rearranged gene blocks which you can see in this picture and the second that is in case of robertsonian translocation what is this how a robertsonian translocation arises here the two normal pairs of chromosome which you can see in the picture then a chromosome from one pair has better attached to a chromosome from another pair so here an example of translocation that is chronic myeloid leukemia which is known as cml which is caused by chromosome 22 of the malignant cells shortened through translocation of a segment of its long arm second is duplication it is the occurrence of a chromosome segment more than once in a chromosome it may be in tandem sequence or in reverse order 
इट मे आकर इन टू वेज होमोलॉगस क्रोमोसोम्स में एट टाइम्स एक्सचेंज अन इक्वल सेगमेंट्स ड्यूरिंग क्रॉसिंग ओवर इन मियोसिस दस वन क्रोमोजोम सफर्स डिलीसन एंड इट्स होमोलॉगस एक्वायर्स एन एडिशनल सेट ऑफ जीन्स Sometimes a fragment of a chromosome separates and joins a homologous chromosome. During synapses between a duplicated and a normal chromosome, the former forms a loop at the site of duplication. So, in case of duplication, the chromosomal segments more than once in a chromosome, like which you can see in this picture. Here, the sequence duplicated. Here. That is T A A, which duplicated two times. That is T A A T A A, and increase the segment of a chromosome. Now, what is the result of morphological chromosomal aberrations? The chromosome mutations results in changes in the number of, number of genes or in the new positions for the genes on the chromosomes. This alters the base sequence of DNA and hence the genetic message transmitted to mRNA. These changes, if not lethal, may cause profound changes in the phenotype. Inversion and translocation interfere in synapses and reduce chances of crossing over. So this is the result of morphological chromosomal aberrations. Now. This is the summarized part of all the chromosomal mutations, and this here you can see there are four main types. Like first one that is the deletion, then duplication, then inversion and translocation. In case of deletion, loss of an inner chromosomal segment, which you can see, that means loss of B portion, that means B letter. In the case of deletion, in duplication, doubling of one or several chromosomal fragments or segments which you can see here that means doubling of b in inversion the change of direction of a chromosomal segment and in translocation is the transfer of a chromosomal segments onto a non homologous chromosome that means a b c d e f is a one chromosome segment and second is g h and i j k l is the second segment after the translocation new one form is a b c j k l and the second is g h i d e f so this shows the translocation so these are the basically main four types of chromosomal mutations now the second that is known as a gene mutation so what is gene mutation a gene mutation is a sudden stable inheritable alteration in the base sequence of a gene capable of changing the phenotype of an organism the gene mutation though involve very minor changes in dna may have far reaching consequence for the cell or the organism for example a change of a single nitrogenous base causes sickle cell anemia that may prove fatal by age 20 a significant fact about gene mutation is that generally only one gene mutates at a time so it shows the frequency of gene mutation a mutated gene can mutate it back to the original wild type unlike the chromosomal mutations the gene mutations are not observable under a microscope here in case of the gene mutation a word that is muton that is the smallest part of a gene that can undergo for the mutation is known as muton this here the smallest muton is a gene which is a single nitrogenous base a gene thus consist of numerous mutons in a linear series a gene may be defined as a unit of mutation a small segment of a chromosome which after a change in at least one of its mutons alters just one trait of a cell and if most gene mutations involve a changes in only a single nucleotide is known as point mutation and if a mutation involving more than one base pair is known as gross mutation here a word that is a copy error mutation what is this 
gene mutates usually occur during replication of dna so all types of gene mutates can potentially occur at the time of dna replication when new dna strains are synthesized hence is at this time gene mutation are called copy error mutation after this now the types of gene mutation in which the first one that is the substitution that means replacement and these are the gene mutations where one or more nitrogenous bases are changed with others so in this picture you can see such a substitution could change a codon to gene that encodes a different amino acid and causes a small change in the protein produced which you can see in the picture that is a mutation that substitute t instead of c and after this polypeptide chain with wrong amino acid formed so at place of c t present so the mrna form will be coding that is a that means adenine in case of substitution this is of two types first one is transition and second is transversion in this picture you can see in case of transition that is the first one these are the substitution gene mutation in which a purine like adenine is replaced by another purine that means guanine or a pyrimidine that is t or thymine is replaced by another pyrimidine that is cytosine so the changes of a codon a t c to g t c or a t t or a c c is an example of the transition and second is the transversion what is this means these are the substitution genes mutation in which a purine that means adenine or guanine is replaced by a pyrimidine that is thymine or cytosine or vice versa so in case of transition purine changed by or mutated by the other purine and pyrimidine by the other pyrimidine but in case of transversion pyrimidine converted into purine and the purine converted into pyrimidine after this the second gene mutation is deletion these are the gene mutation in which one or more nitrogenous bases are lost from a segment of dna that constitutes a gene so in case of deletion changes the number of dna bases by removing a piece of dna a small deletion may remove one or few base pairs within a gene while larger deletions can remove an entire gene or several neighboring genes the deleted genes may alter the function of the resulting proteins so this is the deletion now the third one that is the insertion or addition these are the gene mutations in which one or more nitrogenous bases are introduced into a segment of dna that constitutes a gene this can often in this picture you can see that is a picture of insertion here a uh, happens in microsatellite regions due to the dna and here the polymerase slipping on a chromosome level an insertion refers to the inserting of a large sequence into a chromosome so it shows the insertion that means addition of a new segment into a starting sequence so these are the types of gene mutation now here you can see that is all the types of the gene mutation like the insertion substitution and deletion what happened in all this so in case of substitution one base pair replacement from other like in picture c is replaced by a it means there is no alteration in base number while in insertion one base pair increases it means nine converted into 10 bases and in deletion one base pair decreases it means nine bases converted into the eight bases so it shows the insertion substitution and the deletion type of gene mutation now the next is frame shift mutation 
what is frame synchronization mutations that involving an insertion or deletion of a base can potentially causes great effects if the number of a base inserted or deleted is not divisible by 3 all the base triplets beyond the site of the mutations are altered and this changes the genetic code which is a triplet code and results in the formation of an entirely new polypeptide so the new polypeptide may be inactive and kill the cell. The mutations which alter the entire reading frame of the message are called the frame shift mutation. And this includes deletion and insertion of nitrogenous bases. So the genetic disease named muscular dystrophy is caused by frame shift mutation which leads to the premature termination of the translation that means formation of the protein dystrophy. So this is the frame shift mutation. Now, what is the differences in the point mutation versus frame shift mutation? So point mutation brings changes in the structure of a gene because of the substitution with another base pair. On the contrary, frame shift mutations change the number of nucleotides due to either insertion or deletion of the nucleotides. So this is the main difference between the point mutation and the frame shift mutation. Now, all the main types of mutations. In this, you can see here the first one that is the chromosomal aberrations. In this, if a loss of a fragment of chromosome, it is called deletion. If inversion of a fragment of chromosome, it is called inversion. If attachment of a segment of one chromosome to another, it is called translocation. And if repetition of a segment of in a chromosome is called duplication. While in cases of gene mutation, replacement of one base or nucleotide from another is called substitution. Removal of one or more bases or nucleotides from DNA sequence is called deletion and addition of one or more bases or nucleotides into the DNA sequence is called insertion. So these are the main seven types of mutation in which the four are chromosomal aberrations or mutation and the three are gene mutations. Now what is a nonsense mutation? It stops synthesis of polypeptide by producing a nonsense codon such as ACT or UGA or ATG, ATC or UAG or ATT, UAA. What is missense mutation? It changes a codon which alters a specific amino acid in a polypeptide often making the latter non-functional. So in this picture you can see that in first there is no mutation which you can say that is TTC, AAG from lysine, no mutation occur. After this, in silent or same sense mutation, there is change in base, but it does not show effect and same protein form, while in case of nonsense, it stops the protein synthesis and missense changes a codon which alters a specific amino acid in a polypeptide, often making the latter non-functional. Next is same sense mutation. What is same sense? It is the changes in the codon which does not alter the amino acid of a polypeptide. It is also known as silent mutation. Example GCA to GCT. Arginine is formed in either cases. So it is a phenotypically silent DNA mutation caused by a point mutation that gives rise to a different codon which is transcribed as a synonymous codon and the sense that means same amino acids is incorporated into the growing polypeptide or would have been incorporated by the original non-mutated codon. The protein remains unchanged. So this is the same sense mutation or silent mutation. Now what are point mutation? 
In this picture you can see that is the original DNA. That means UUA that corresponds to the amino acid leucine. In case of frame shift mutation that means every amino acid that follows will be altered. And here an attachment of G and it will form the triplet that is UUG at place of UUA. It shows the frame shift mutation. Second is silent mutation. In this case, at place of U, here C form, C placed here. So, because of this, UUA also code to the leucine and CUA also code leucine. So, it shows the silent mutation or same sense mutation. Next is miss sense mutation. Here, UUA converted into GUA at place of U, G placed here and it forms valine at place of leucine while in the last that is a nonsense mutation it at place of uua uaa form that means u changed by a and it acts as an stop codon so it's known as the nonsense mutation so these are all the point mutations that means changes in a single base causes different effects now the origin of mutation. So, mutations may arise spontaneously due to certain intracellular factors or by induced by environmental factors. The latter are called mutagens or mutagenic agents. In this origin of mutation, first one is spontaneous mutation. These occur at random and their frequency is rather low. They may arise by errors in the process of replication and form failure to repair damaged DNA properly. So many cells products such as formaldehyde, peroxides act as mutagens and the background radiations from the sun and radioactive minerals in rocks are mutagenic. Certain genes mutate much more frequently than the others that are called mutable genes. Some genes termed mutators or mutator genes increase the mutation rate. Others known as suppressor genes decrease the mutation rate. So these all are the spontaneous mutation. After this, the second is induced mutation. So what is the induced mutation? The mutagens that induce mutation may be biological, physical or chemical. So here the first one that is the biological mutagens. Viruses causes mutation in the host cell in some unknown manner. In case of physical mutagens, the physical mutagenic includes radiations and temperature. So in case of radiation, high energy radiation such as X-rays, gamma rays, alpha and beta rays, cosmic rays, ultraviolet light etc. have been found to be mutagenic in almost all organisms. They produce mutations by causing breaks in the DNA molecule. Next is temperature. It is reported that rise in temperature increase the rate of mutation. High temperature denatures DNA by breaking the hydrogen bonds between the two strands of DNA. This affects replication and transcription. And the last that is the chemical mutagens. A variety of chemicals act as a mutagens. This includes nitrous acid, formaldehyde, peroxide, mustard gas, fibromyuracil, acridines etc. Colchicine induces poly polypolarity by inhibiting the formation of spindle in cell division. So these are the induced mutators. Now the inheritance of mutation. Mutations are inherited when their causative genes are copied during DNA replication and passed on to the cell's descendants. Mutation is a somatic cell by cause changes in the hereditary characteristics of the cell including cancer to the body parts formed of the descendants of that cell. So this is the inheritance of mutations. Now what are the importance of mutations? So there are many manifold importance in which 
The first one is adaptation. Mutations provide variability for organism to adapt to new environment for survival. Second is organic evolution. So mutation contributes to the evolution of the species. They are only source of the new raw material on which natural selection can work. However, the genetic material of the existing organism has resulted from millions of years of natural selection. Next is agriculture. In agriculture point of view, there are many types of mutations like Mutant variety of wheat and rice have solved our food problems. Mutations have produced certain seedless fruits that are easy to take. Improved varieties of ornamental plants such as chrysanthemum, dahlia, rose have come into existence by somatic mutation. Mutation have produced new vegetables such as cabbage and uh, corn coal from the wild cabbage. Mutation have reduced the, the, uh, the duration of crops without affecting yields. A new sugarcane variety that matures in 10 months instead of 18 months taken by old varieties. So these are the use of mutation in agriculture. Now in case of animal husbandry, many domestic animals and pets have originated by mutations from the pre-existing wild varieties. And these include short-legged sheep, hornless cattle, hairless cats, etc. In case of industry, mutant strains of microorganisms with better fermenting power or wild better yield of antibiotics or other useful products have been isolated and are being used in various industries. In case of research, mutations are useful for understanding the basic principles of inheritance and cell metabolism. Mutation with lethal effects are useful for researchers' works. Next is other uses, like knowledge of induced mutation reveals the need for protecting the X-ray technicians and workers in atomic energy plants. So these are the importance of the mutations. Now, what is pedigree analysis? So, it is a kind of genetic analysis in which a trait is traced through several generations of a family to de determine how the trait is inherited. So, it is very important to know. Now, before the techniques of the pedigree analysis, you have to know that the, why the problems in the study of human inheritance. Human traits are often not controlled by a single pair of genes or in the cases of tallness and dwarfness in case of peas. Now humans have a mixed ancestry and few if any traits are pure. A person can observe only 3 or 4 human generations in his lifetime. The generation time is long, often 20 years or more. Individual progenies are comparatively small. Environment have a powerful influence on the human traits. Chromosome number in humans is large and humans cannot be subjected to the condition of genetic experiments such as controlled mating, standardized environments, etc. So, in view all of the above problems, the geneticist depends on pedigree analysis that is study of family record and for following the inheritance and distribution of certain genetic traits in case of human beings. So, pedigree analysis is also used for the domestic animals, especially the pets. Now, in case of techniques of pedigree analysis, for pedigree analysis, first information is gathered about the family's history for a specific trait. Then, the expression of the trait is shown in the family tree. It is a convention to represent females by circle and males by squares in a pedigree chart. The symbols are shaded to indicate the trait under study and are left unshaded to show the normal form. A horizontal line connecting a male and a female indicating the mating of the parents. So here there are the symbols used in the human pedigree analysis in which you can see the square indicates male, then circle is female, 
then it shows mating then parents and children that means in order of the birth dizygotic twins monozygotic twins number of children affected individuals are dark black circles and squares heterozygotes for the autosomal recessive carrier of sex linked recessive decreased deceased spontaneous abortion consensual marriage sex unknown so these are the symbols which is very important if we start to study about the pedigree analysis now here are some tools of the pedigree analysis so the principle of probability and chances of differences in realized ratio based on the smallness of the progeny elimination of the alternatives these are the tools of the pedigree analysis now pedigree analysis can be categorized as follows first one that is autosomal dominant trait the pedigree seldom skips a generation in case of autosomal recessive traits the pedigree may skip a generation sex linked dominant trait more common in case of female sex linked recessive trait more common in males y linked traits directly passes from father to son so these are the categories in pedigree analysis now here you can see a example that means human pedigree analysis and it shows here all the family members phenotype here the father is affected so in the second generation they have five child in which three daughters and two sons both cases affected child but not all after that in the next generation they got married and they form the offsprings in which some are affected and some are not so this this shows a family tree that means a pedigree analysis and here if you start to study it then it is very important to know about the symbols and the categories of the pedigree analysis now here you can see all the conditions in the pedigree analysis in which the first one that is the autosomal dominant cannot be recessive as two affected parents and could not have an unaffected offspring parents must be heterozygous while in case of autosomal recessive cannot be dominant as two unaffected parents could not have an affected offspring parents must be heterozygous in case of x linked dominant sex linkage cannot be confirmed 100% incidences of the affected daughters from an affected father suggests x linked dominance while in case of x linked recessive sex linkage cannot be confirmed 100% incidences of the affected sons from an affected mother suggests x linked recessive so this is the end of video in which you got knowledge about the variation mutation and pedigree analysis so next video will be on the genetic disorders so if you like this video and you got it and understand it like and share this video and subscribe to my channel anupma biology classes if you have anything to ask write in the comment section below thank you for the watching